Today, we will delve deeply into the ongoing market manipulation that has been affecting AMC's stock, including the mysterious 3 million spoof shares and how major institutions like Citadel and their prime brokers are dealing with financial issues ranging from failed trades to systematic manipulation. We will also analyze how these factors are influencing AMC's stock price and what it means for retail investors. To begin, let's discuss the practice of spoofing. For those who are not familiar with the term, spoofing is an illegal market manipulation technique where large institutional players' orders are placed at inflated pricing, typically much less than the current market worth, which leads to the increasing aberrations on the stock. This is a common tactic used to suppress the stock price, especially in highly shorted stocks like AMC and GME. Recently, we saw an order of 3 million AMC shares listed at an incredible price of 0.1 per share. This order was never intended to be filled. Rather, its sole purpose was to artificially lower the price of AMC's shares. Panic among retailers and investors creates the illusion that there is an overwhelming supply of shares at a fraction of the current price, which causes the stock price to plummet. Um, what's concerning is that this isn't a single incidence. Rather, it has been occurring often for a while. Many of these spoof orders are made by the same institutions, and they have a tendency of focusing on companies like AMC and GME that pose the biggest risks to short sellers. Even more intriguing is the fact that equities like AMC that are risky for big institutions' short positions are the ones that receive this kind of treatment. We don't see this kind of spoofing or manipulation in other stocks that don't have a strong short interest. The obvious question is, if these institutions are no longer holding large short positions in AMC, why would they feel the need to continuously spoof the stock? This pattern clearly shows that these institutions are actively working to suppress the price of AMC, despite its improving fundamentals and growing popularity. This suggests that they are either heavily invested in seeing AMC's stock price drop or still have significant short positions. Based on a tweet by the user A Crystal Ball Brokerages, such as Wedbush and D Davidson, layered in nasty bids for 1 million AMC shares at 0.000001 per share. For 279 days in a row, Crystal Ball has been monitoring these spoof orders, demonstrating that this is a daily occurrence for AMC. Spoofing isn't the only problem. Despite being illegal, these manipulative tactics continue to create a disconnect between the stock's actual value and its trading price, which is discouraging for retail investors who are placing bets on AMC's potential based on the company's fundamentals. This raises additional concerns about market integrity and the lack of enforcement against such practices. AMC encounters another method of manipulating AMC is through off-exchange trading. About 66% of AMC's retail buy orders are internalized within companies like City Securities and are not routed to the open markets, where they would affect the stock price. As a result, they have little to no impact on AMC's share price on the open market. In a previous video, we discussed how AMC's buy orders are being systematically hidden from the public market. If all of these buy orders were routed to the lit market, AMC's price would likely be much higher due to natural supply and demand dynamics. But by diverting these orders, institutions maintain control over the stock's price, keeping it artificially low. These manipulative practices, along with dark pool trading, allow institutions to suppress the stock's price while avoiding scrutiny from regulators. Additionally, this internalization further suppresses the price because buy orders are not contributing to upward pressure. Let's move on to the function of banks. Not so long ago, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway sold 9.5 million shares of Bank of America bringing Berkshire's stake in the bank down to less than 10%. This allowed Buffett to keep selling without having to disclose any information. Why is this important? One of Citadel's prime brokers and a significant lender for short bets on AMC is Bank of America. This is significant because it may indicate that Citadel, a major player in the AMC saga, is also experiencing financial strain. Citadel is currently searching for new sources of liquidity and attempted to establish a new brokerage in China following a failed bid to acquire credit as his onshore business. 
Buffett's moves suggest a lack of confidence in Bank of America's financial stability as banks continue to unload their holdings. This reflects those with exposure to over-leveraged hedge funds like Citadel. Uh, this suggests that Citadel is looking to expand its business and generate new sources of income, but its difficulties in the Chinese market, along with their significant reliance on borrowed money and overly leveraged positions, present a dismal image of their financial health and further exacerbate the disarray. Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, recently said that although the Fed can cut interest rates, it cannot address the impending housing problem. This claim has many people worried that the 2008 financial crisis may recur and that real estate values may plummet. Why does this matter for AMC? If the real estate market collapses, the value of the collateral held by many of these big institutions, including Citadel, would further decline, possibly resulting in margin calls and forced liquidations. These companies would be forced to cover their short positions as a result of this situation, which might start the long-anticipated short squeeze for AMC, which stock is superior has been the subject of numerous debates. It's crucial to remember that both AMC and GME have advantages and disadvantages. AMC has a stronger business plan than GME, but GME has a sizable financial reserve that AMC does not yet have. Understanding that both equities are being manipulated similarly and that they could both squeeze if short sellers are unable to hold on to their holdings is crucial. The correlation between the price movements of AMC and GME further demonstrates that the same entities are targeting both stocks. Therefore, it is not a question of which stock is better. Rather, it is about realizing that both are victims of the same manipulation tactics. If one stock experiences a squeeze, the other will probably follow suit because they share many short sellers. In conclusion, the manipulation tactics used against AMC and GME are blatant attempts to suppress the stock price and discourage retail investors. Whether it is spoofing off exchange trading or dark pool internalization, these tactics are meant to instill fear and uncertainty. However, as more attention is paid to these issues, retail investors are becoming more knowledgeable and resilient, and the financial difficulties faced by Citadel and other institutions, along with the broader economic challenges, may be paving the way for a significant change in the dynamics of the market. That's all we have for you today, gentlemen. Please share your thoughts regarding AMC stock in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.